it's mind blowing how long the lines are to get gas. That's crazy. Do you want, what do you want to say about the gas situation in Venezuela? Well, it has always been wrong. You know, when it was almost free, it was wrong. So now it's all messed up because we're having a real world gas prices and, and it's all messy. Despite that we are the country with most oil in the world, we don't produce gasoline in here because the government has damaged all the gasoline plants and fabrics and everything. So we have to export oil and buy gasoline from outside. Stupidly crazy. Anywhere there is a gas station, there's conflict. Struggle, there's like bars, like police and, and military men and mayhem. They put gasoline again and they can storage. Oh, okay. he's storing it in the bottle. But it's, it's yeah, they're storing the it in the bottle, yeah. Mi reina, ¿cuántas horas tienes en la cola? Está lejos. No, they don't want anything. Okay. Gracias. They, they have three hours. Three hours. Three hours in this line. And this line, and after this corner, it's like two miles to the right to get into the gas station. What? Two miles. You wanna go? No. So these people spend all day waiting in line just to get gas. Yeah. What? To get the subsidiary gas, the, the cheap gas. The free one. The free, free one. one. That yeah. is like a full tank, one dollar. As we sit here in the gasoline line, which is a, a pretty surreal experience here in Venezuela, it blows my mind to think that this country is so full of, of natural oil and wealth in terms of, of gasoline, but they don't even have enough gas to, to service people. There are shortages all over the country. So in this video, we're gonna investigate the oil and gas crisis of Venezuela. If there's one thing that I've learned from traveling to 194 countries, it is that oil makes the world go round. It's the most sought after natural resource, our primary fuel, and it's a major force in the production of goods and services. And I'm not only talking about gasoline, jet fuel, and heating oil, but any products that use plastic, asphalt, wax, or paint. Pretty much everything we use in our daily lives. I'm pretty sure you already know that Venezuela has been experiencing the biggest economic downfall in the history of mankind. And the main driver for this is, well, you guessed it, oil. They have enough oil in Venezuela to embarrass the Saudis. They are swimming in oil. What did they do when they had peak oil prices? Nothing. In the 1920s, the largest oil reserve on earth was discovered off the Caribbean coast of Venezuela, and pretty quickly, the country became the world's largest oil exporter, supplying 10% of global needs. For a very long time, things were fine and dandy until a combination of mismanagement, US sanctions, and now a pandemic has crippled its oil production and sent its economy to pieces. In short, the government has become too dependent on the export of oil, and without any foreign investment coming in, the oil output is the lowest level in decades. Combine that with an absurd amount of debt and the most severe hyperinflation ever seen, and the situation has evolved into more of a humanitarian crisis, with shortages of basic food, drinking water, medical supplies, and gasoline. Okay. He said they're recycling plastic, uh, steel, and everything you can find to, to resell it then, because they're looking for money, of course. They say uh, my daily food is breakfast, lunch, and dinner from the garbage. As I currently make this video, 91% of Venezuelans are living in poverty, the highest proportion in all of Latin America, and even worse, over 5 million of them have left the country. So do of the government right now, the situation in Venezuela is a bit difficult. Let's back up and get a little more detailed about how Venezuela's mismanagement of oil has led them into this giant economic mess. 
1976, President Carlos Perez nationalized the industry by creating Perovesa, which is a state-owned oil and gas company. At its height, they were pumping 3 million barrels per day, and the money was rolling in. That's how Caracas was built as one of the richest cities in Latin America with a thriving middle class and the strongest currency, which as you probably know, is completely worthless today. This is 500 bolivares, 500 bolivares. Look, look, oh, they're the same. And this is 50,000 and Wait, this is 500. So they just changed? Yeah, the color and the numbers. That, that, that's so tacky, man. Wait, what? It's so lame. This doesn't mean anything right now, anything. 500 bolivares is this. And 500 bolivares yeah. before they take out five zeros. In 1999, President Hugo Chavez came to power and established a socialist regime. He created programs to help the poor, such as raising the minimum wage and providing free electricity, free water, and basic food to all households. What we have here is a bag with food of the subsidized program that the government has for the people in need. They are just giving like eight kilos of rice, three kilos of flour, and two kilos of spaghetti, of, of pasta. Totally That's, free. Yeah, yeah, totally free. But most of all, he produced heavily subsidized gasoline, AKA free. The gasoline prices are so ridiculously low that if you were to have a uh, hundred dollars, change them at the black market exchange rate, and buy gasoline with them, you will have enough gas to run a few laps around Earth. With $100? Yes, with even less. You could do a few laps to the whole world. That's insane. Now, when cheap. gasoline is very, very cheap in Venezuela compared to everyone else. So you have an incentive to smuggle gasoline. And smuggling gasoline from Venezuela to Colombia, due to the price differential, it was potentially perhaps the most profitable business in the history of humanity. Really? Okay. Well, it's hard to represent, but tell me what other economic endeavor gives you return rates of over, of over a billion percent? When President Maduro took office in 2013, pretty much everything took a turn for the worst. Within just two years, oil prices fell from $100 per barrel to under $30 per barrel, further sucking Venezuela into a downward economic spiral. What is this building right here? This is a fabric or a oil refinery yeah. where they track the oil. And also this one, like two months ago, was a massive oil spread in the coast of Venezuela. Maduro is now being forced to import fuel from Iran for the country's own consumption because much of their own reserves have run completely dry. As of the year 2020, international gas stations with international prices have popped up around the country. We're heading to international price gasoline. I think still the cheapest in the world is 50 cents per liter. I have two tanks, so I have 150 liters. That would be like $75. Yeah, but that's a lot of Okay, yeah, I have 150 liters. I, I put two tanks because but if you go to the amazing places of the country, you probably won't find a gas station in 400 kilometers or something like that. So you have to have gasoline, you know? However, most people cannot afford to pay the international price for gasoline, so they are still going to the heavily subsidized ones, which explains why I keep on seeing unbelievably long lines to fill up your gas tank. There must have been like hundreds of cars in that line just now. Yeah, this is a gasoline line uh -huh. and you see this car for example is totally empty that he's pushing the car until the line and also the cop is helping to, to push the car. <laughs> they try to keep control of the line and also help people. So you completely ran out of gas? Yeah, okay. yeah, like totally out of gas. All these cars behind me are waiting in line to fill up their tank and it just goes on forever. All the way down, man. Probably, you can't even see the end of the probably line. Probably 500 meters or a kilometer. And people have no problem waiting three hours to fill no, up the man. tank. And we are in the middle of the city, man. What's up, bro? How are you? Todo bien? How does it feel that you have to wait in line so long to fill up your tank? Y como te sientes que tienes que esperar tanto tiempo para... Más lo mismo, acostumbrado. Yeah, yeah. He said he is already, already custom to it. How do you decide which gas tank to go to and when to go? Okay, ¿cómo decides a cuál estación ir y, por, y, y cómo? Claro. No, azar. Azar únicamente. Estoy en tal sitio, bueno, vamos. He says it's just random. It's like in the neighborhood and they, they just go around and they see how, how far the line is and if they can, you know, 
just not be the whole day there. Dude, in the US, if you have to wait an hour to fill your tank, do you have any idea how people will be? If you have to wait five minutes no, to fill man. your tank, people will lose their, lose their shit no, and be no. like, you know? It makes no sense to me. That's crazy. But that's just the situation here in Venezuela. There's nobody in the cars, man. Because probably they start making the line and there was no gas in the gas station, so the, they just leave the cars to save the spot. For real? Yeah, it's still there. Oh, look at there. That yeah, way. it's going that way. <laughs> Whoa, why did they leave the cars? Just to save the spot because sometimes someone says like the gasoline truck is coming they just put the car in front of the gas station even if there is no gasoline just to save the spot in all of my travels i've never seen a situation like this where you literally have to wait hours and hours sometimes even days and weeks just to fill up your gas tank and it's not only occasionally or in one area of the country it's literally every single gas station in venezuela all right we are rolling up now to get gas here in caracas they just put a barricade behind your car see they put like a thing no no it was there it was there so what's happening right now we're trying to put gas again, but today we weren't that lucky. They said that we have to leave a lot of space because it comes something important on, or from the government, they have to put it in the first spot. I mean, like people from the ministries or whatever, they don't do line. He practically said that I have to make a U-turn in the middle of the highway, literally, just to go back and make the line this is bizarre so like it's just a regular gas station that we're rolling up to but some government things going on so we can't even get in they're making us uh, do the line like i don't know 300 meters back you see it's like a shit military tent what are they doing there's like 15 military sitting on the wall nothing nothing why are they here what they regularly do is is be like in the middle of the highway with a cone in the middle yeah, of the I highway them. Just, them yeah like them just trying to stop whoever they think is suspicious ask for papers anything and if they see a possibility to take out some money they do it so there's a lot of bribing happening a lot a lot a lot a lot all right now we just got access we are rolling up here yep. Let me see what, what if they see my camera what happens they just don't want anything to show what is happening and we are in finally so yeah have time to fill up our gas tank They just closed the gas station before I leave. Yeah. Close it. Why? So it? Look, Why because they it? were into a procedure of counting the gas or oh, I don't know. And then yeah. we just got chips that taste like they're from 2005. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the question now becomes where is the end? Does Venezuela have a way to dig themselves out of this crazy economic crisis? In my opinion, the government's major objective should be to use the oil earnings responsibly, which means investing back into the economy by building infrastructure and educating its people. Also, making sure that everything is done transparently so the locals can know exactly what's happening and we can try to end all of this corruption. For a country that was once, that it was actually being prosperous, that illusion not only came down crashing, but it became one of the worst self-inflicted economic disasters in the Western Hemisphere and in recent history. It's a country that had that that it looks like it had a promise. It, it made a few mistakes, but then it made plenty of mistakes. And now, when people ask me if the Venezuelan economy has a future, and it does, it's just that it's not right. Thank you so much for your time. Awesome. It is so nerve-wracking to shoot in this country, but specifically in gas stations and supermarkets and stuff. It is like scary. You don't want them to see your camera. You, know, you can't see it from here. Look, it's down. I, I told you. He was, I don't know. Is it bodyguard? Uh, I thought, I thought. I thought that it was a bodyguard from that guard. Oh man, that's a good shot of that guy. No, he's not. What a situation. That's the bread of every day for me. 
bread. El pan de cada día. The bread It's of like day. my daily habit, you know, uh, dealing with these motherfuckers. People say like, oh, you shouldn't be like that because you live there and they may see if they watch your videos, whatever, they would say something or maybe look for you, but I'm not afraid, bro. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not doing anything bad. I'm just, I'm just, I just have the right to express what I feel and the situation with the cops in here. I could try to understand them that the government pays them like $1 per month, but that's not my trouble. They could find another job, you know? I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and ring that little bell so you can get notified on all my upcoming videos as I take you to every single country in the world.